Hello YouTube! I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and as a way of celebrating the end of 2017 and the entrance of 2018, I will be talking about 33 horror films that are all expected to be released in 2018. The chances of all of them being released is slim of course, and if you did watch the video I did last year, then you will see that several of those are listed on this one once again. That's just the way the movie industry works these days, and I've tried to only keep movies that are either way into filming, post-production, or even complete on this list, so hopefully most of these will actually be delivered to us. And just a little heads up, this video was originally supposed to drop at the end of 2017, but due to my leg acting up on me, leaving me in pain simply by sitting in the chair, I have not been able to finish this before the New Year's. So whenever I'm referring to this year, then I'm talking about 2017, and whenever I'm referring to the next year, then that is of course then 2018. The pain also made it hard for me to record in the first place, so if some of the English in this video is worse than my normal stuff, then I do apologize. I'm not going to rank these in any sort of way, but rather just do it the easiest way in keeping them alphabetical. If you are familiar with my channel, then you do know that the majority of movies that I watch are not new at all. That being said, I thought that 2017 was a great year in horror, and from what's scheduled, it looked like 2018 will continue on that trend. So without further ado, whatever that means, here is 33 upcoming horror movies that you can expect to make their mark in 2018. Can't have a new year without a shitty, low-budget Amityville movie, now can we? Amityville Creation does not have a release date as of the date I'm doing this video, but it does have a teaser trailer and most of the cast and crew attached to it. I am going to guess that the production time of this won't be long, so expect to see this hit some video on demand service sometime in 2018, regardless if you really want it or not. Children of the Corn Runaway will be the 10th movie in this franchise and it is now supposed to be released during March of 2018 from Dimension Films. It is directed by John Gulager from Project Green and Feast fame and will be about a young pregnant lady who escapes the cult of corn and tries to get away from them in order to save her newborn child from growing up in this violent and adult-hating environment. Children of the Corn is one of those franchises that I have a lot of love for, without being able to understand why, so count me in for any new Children of the Corn movie in 2018. Cloverfield movie, which will surely see a retitling, is the third Cloverfield movie following the original and well-received 2016 movie 10 Cloverfield Lane. This film went under the title of God Particle under its development, which can be traced all the way back to 2012. The movie will be about a group of astronauts on a space station, who make a scary discovery that would change all of our lives forever. Look out for the film, and whatever title it will end up with, in cinemas on February 2nd. I talked about Day of the Dead Bloodline last year as well, just without the Bloodline part of the title as that's been added on later. This is going to be a remake of George Romero's much-loved 1985 zombie movie, and it now has a scheduled release date on the 5th of January, making it one of the earliest horror movies to be released in 2018. It is directed by Spanish director Hector Hernández Vicens, who has previously done The Corpse of Anna Fritz. While I'm not all too happy about them remaking Day of the Dead again, I do have to say that the trailer doesn't look all that bad unless you're simply tired of everything zombie related these days. That one awakens to eternal life. Death House also makes a return to the list after being featured on it last year as well. This is supposed to be the expendables of the horror genre, with a big cast of horror icons such as Kane Hodder, Dee Wallace, Michael Berryman, Brinke Stevens, Lloyd Kaufman, Bill Mosley, Tiffany Sheppis, Debbie Rochon, Sid Haig and many, many more. Death House will also be one of the earlier horror movies of this year, with a release date of the 28th of January, and regardless of what the quality the movie has to offer, it will be fun to see all of these lovely people on the screen together. Remember the critically hated The Gallows from 2015? Well, even if no one seemed to enjoy the film, it still made a whole bunch of money, so Warner and New Line of course wanted a sequel made to it, and it is now scheduled to be released sometime next year. The director duo of the first film, Travis Clough and Chris Loffin, is back in the chairs again for this one, and the film is currently in post-production. No release date has been revealed yet, but expect the return of The Gallows to arrive sometime next year. Motherfucking Halloween is returning to the big screen. On the 19th of October, Michael Myers will once again resurrect and slaughter people left and right. 
This version promises to have the final confrontation between Michael and his sister Laurie Strode, who I guess did meet their demise after all in Halloween Resurrection. This one will be handled by Blue Mouse and Universal, and they even have John Carpenter on board to oversee the project as a writer, executive producer, and he's even doing the music for it. David Gordon Green is the director, and he is a guy who has done plenty of work, but none that I can say that I'm all that familiar with. I believe that 2018 will be the year that slasher films comes back again, and with that I think the timing is perfect for Michael Myers to once again cause havoc and scare movie audiences worldwide. Hellraiser Judgment is another film that I expected to see during 2017, but it turns out that postponing low budget movies that will unlikely see any theater time is a thing for Dimension Films, now that they also did the same for the previously mentioned Children of the Core movie. I can't honestly say that I have any excitement for a new Hellraiser movie after the abomination that was Hellraiser Revelations, but I'm sure to check it out regardless. It still doesn't have a set release date or even a trailer, but it would surprise me if it isn't dumped onto some streaming service during 2018. The House with a Clock in its Walls will be the new feature film from Eli Roth after its remake of Death Wish with Bruce Willis is released. This film is described as a gothic fantasy horror and will follow an orphan who helps his uncle to find a magical clock with the powers to bring an end to the entire world. The film is based on a 1973 book by author Eric Kipke and has a star studded cast with Kate Blanchett, Jack Black and Kyle MacLachlan in it. The House with a Clock in its Walls is currently being filmed and is aiming for a release on September 21st. Housewife is Khan Evrenul's follow-up movie to his 2015 film Baskin. Housewife is currently starting to do its round on the festival market. A trailer for it is out now and it looks like it will be more bizarre, gory imagery that fans of Baskin surely will enjoy. I am happy to see that Evrenol has been able to create a new movie this quickly, and as I was a huge fan of Baskin, this makes Housewife to be on the top of the films on this list of the films I'm most excited about to see in 2018. I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu was also included on last year's list, as this has been completed for quite some time now. Recently, news regarding the project came out saying that they were aiming for their release next year due to it being the 40th year anniversary of the original film. This one is a direct sequel to the original, with Camille Keaton returning as the author Jennifer Hills. She is now living in New York with her daughter Christy, played by Jamie Bernadette. They are both kidnapped by the relatives of the original group of redneck rapists in what I'm sure will be a nightmare and torture infused experience for them both. If rape revenge movies is your thing, then make sure to seek out this film whenever and however it gets released next year. Incident in a Ghostland will be the newest feature film from French filmmaker Pascal Lagier, the guy who will always be remembered in a genre due to him being responsible for the 2008 French extreme film Martyrs. This film is both written and directed by Lagier and is supposed to get a release in April. In it we follow twin girls who are scarred from a traumatic childhood experience. When they head to the childhood home that they grew up in 16 years later, things start to come back at them and shit gets scary. Well, hopefully. The film stars the famous French singer Marlene Farmer together with Crystal Reed and Anastasia Phillips, and is rumored to be a dark and scary experience. Sounds perfect for my ears. Insidious The Last Key is one of the earliest horror films to set off the new year as it has a release date on the 5th of January. Lin Shay is reprising her role as Elise in this fourth Insidious film, which will focus more on the Elise character as an unknown force is attacking her and her very own family. I am a huge fan of the first two Insidious films, and while the third was a bit of a letdown, I am hopeful that this will bring the franchise back on track. Adam Robitel is in charge as a director on this, probably due to his work on the 2014 The Taking of Debra Logan, which received good critical response. Insidious The Last Key will hopefully set off the new year in a good way, and you can count me in as one of those who will have their asses in cinemas when this arrives on the 5th of January. Itsy Bitsy is a new film that takes the nursery rhyme and puts the horror spin on it. 
This originally started out as a successful Kickstarter campaign, and the trailer for it actually looks pretty cool. The film tells the story of a single mother who together with her two children moves into a new house so she can take up a new job as a private nurse. One of her kids gets a hold of an ancient relic, and soon a supernatural spider is let loose to turn the life of the family upside down. I highly suggest that you check out the full trailer for this film, and make a note of it so you won't forget to check out Itsy Bitsy once it gets released during the air. Let me check under my bed. You were just having a bad dream. Meg, oh sorry, THE Meg, as it is now known as, is finally getting a release now with an August 10th release date attached to it. This giant big budget shark movie has been in the works for quite some years now, with New Line originally hoping for it to be ready for a summer release in 2006. Now the rights are in the hands of Warner, and they originally had Eli Roth attached to be the director, but he left the project due to creative differences as he wanted the film to be R-rated while he also wanted to write and have the starring role in it. Instead, this PG-13 film will have John Turtlebaud in the director chair, and the main star of it will be Jason Statham. The budget for this is reportedly as high as $150 million, and it will be interesting to see if such a big shark movie will have what it takes to make its money back when it's released in August. I wasn't quite sure if I should have included The New Mutants on this list or not, but the ones involved have been calling it a horror film for quite some time now, and the trailer does make it look like a dark movie, so fuck it. The New Mutants plays within the X-Men world and follows five young mutants who are held in a secret facility where they are discovering and exploring their powers. This film will be directed by Josh Boone, who had great success with the 2014 movie The Fault in Our Stars. The New Mutants should be interesting to fans of comic book movies who don't mind them exploring the darky side of things. Expect The New Mutants to be released on April 13. You've been through a lot. Get some rest. Nightmare Cinema is a new horror anthology that will be led by the iconic actor Mickey Rourke. The film will feature five short films by an impressive list of directors, which includes Mick Harris, Joe Dante, David Slade, Ryuhi Kitamura, and Alejandro Brugues. The premise here is that a group of down the luck characters are entering the Rialto Theater, where their deepest fears are brought onto the screen by the projectionist, played by Rourke. The film is supposed to go for the tone of the Twilight Zone and Outer Limits, and they are also working on making this into a television series as well. There is no release date or anything for Nightmare Cinema, so I'm not sure if this will be able to make the release next year, but considering that this is in post-production now, I would not be surprised to see this pop up during 2018. Remember the scary nun from The Conjuring 2? Well, you will be reminded of her next year as her very own spin-off, simply called The Nun, is due to get a wide release on the 13th of July. This is the second spin-off in the Conjuring universe, with the first being Annabelle, who now even got its own sequel, with more probably in the works. The Nun tells the story of a priest that is sent to Rome to investigate the mysterious death of a nun. The film will star Taisa Farmiga, the younger sister of Vera Farmiga, who of course plays Lorraine Warren in the two Conjuring movies. The director on this project is Corin Hardy, who I have met myself on the Ramaskirik Horror Film Festival two years ago when he came there to screen his film The Hallow. Fun guy, and I hope his energy is transmitted into this film, which hopefully will be an experience more like The Conjuring, and less like Annabelle. Polaroid is another movie I talked about in the last year's video, and now it both has an official trailer and the release date of 25th of August. I should mention that the Weinstein company pulled back its original release date of 22nd of November, just a few weeks earlier, but judging by the scandal that Harvey Weinstein created, then I'm sure that this wasn't a bad decision on their parts. Polaroid is a Norwegian and American co-production, and I saw the short film by Lars Kleberg that it was based on back in 2016 on the fantastic Ramaskrik Horror Film Festival. Kleberg is still on as a director, but I do notice that there is another guy also listed as a director, with Arnaud Kalistri sharing credits with my fellow Norwegian. The premise is simple, with a Polaroid camera capturing more than what the young characters want, and the trailer promises a jump scared filled modern version of The Ring. I guess I was hoping for a film that looked more like it might be a product out of Norway, but regardless of that, the film does look like a fun time in the cinema for a younger horror crowd. 
I'm gonna remain carefully optimistic of it and try to ignore the more annoying parts of the trailer. Puppet Master makes a return on the 4th of July with the reboot called Puppet Master The Lidless Reich. This is supposed to be a new take with a more comedic twist to it, revolving around a guy who finds a mint condition blade doll that he brings along to a convention in Texas that are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Toulon murders. Blade and all the puppets in the convention suddenly start to come to life and havoc, of course, ensues. Surprisingly enough, this reboot has some pretty big people behind it, with one of the producers being Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, who worked on the Transformers franchise, the writer is S. Craig Saler, who penned Bone Tomahawk, and the directors are Sonny Laguna and Tommy Wicklund. The cast can brag about having Michael Pyre, Barbara Crampton and even Udo Kier. It is uncertain whether Puppet Master The Littlest Reich will make it into cinemas, but regardless of which platform it goes out on, this should definitively be of interest for the fans of the long-lasting Full Moon franchise. The fourth installment to the Purge series, The Purge The Island, is set to be released on the 4th of July. The film will be directed by Gregory McMurray and it will be a prequel that will explore the origins of The Purge and eventually lead up to the events that took place in the very first film. Fans of The Purge should not be all too worried about the film having a new director, as franchise creator James DiMonaco is still on board as a writer on this one. Should also mention that there is still work on being put into turning The Purge into a television show, with hopes of launching it around the same time as the film hits theaters. From Platinum Dunes comes A Quiet Place, which is scheduled to drop on April 13th. This is a film about a family that lives isolated and has adapted their life in such a way that they go on about their daily routines without making so much as a sound. This is due to a supernatural entity attacking them whenever they can hear them. John Krasinski both direct and star in this film and has his real life Emily Blunt with him for the ride and judging by the trailer this does look mysterious and interesting with hopes that the premise doesn't end up becoming a cheap gimmick. Another of several returners from last year's list is the newest opus from Troma, Return to Return to Nukem High aka Volume 2. This is a long awaited sequel to Return to Nukem High which came out in 2013. The film has been shown on a few festivals by now but we are still awaiting it to be available worldwide and 2018 better be the year for it. It sucks that it has become so hard for Lloyd Kaufman and his crew to create new movies with so many years being in between them, so hopefully this will be good and help the company out. Revenge is a film that I actually seen already, as it was screened at this year's Ramaskirik Horror Film Festival here in Norway. It has not received a wide release yet, which it will early in 2018, so I am going to include it here on this list. Revenge is a fantastic movie from a young, female French filmmaker named Coralie Fadjo. It feels like it fits together with this year's Raw, just at this place with a different premise. Whenever it does come out where you are, make sure you see it. And check out my full video review for it on my channel if this sparks any interest. Rock Paper Dead is a newest movie from horror filmmaker Tom Holland. Rock Paper Dead tells the story of serial killer Peter Harris, also known as the Dollmaker. He is released and returns to his childhood home after being committed for 10 years in a mental institution, and it doesn't take long before his childhood memories come back to him, and if you've seen a few horror movies in your time, you know that traumatic memories usually sets off psychotic acts. The trailer for Rock Paper Dead looks just okay, but I usually do enjoy Holland as a director, which is why I'm including Rock Paper Dead in this video. Do you want to play a game with me? Sky Shark is the result of a successful Kickstarter campaign and a never-ending lust people have for silly shark movies. 
This German production managed to nail yet $100,000 by donating happy fans who wanted to see this movie that promises to be the ultimate zombies on flying sharks movie. Sky Shark tells a tale of geologists who had actually come across an old NASA experiment where they have successfully created modified sharks that now have the ability to fly with undead zombies riding them in the air. The trailer is already out on the interwebs and it looks like a film that tries to be the next Sharknado, but it's not like they are the first to try that these days within the shark exploitation genre, but Sky Shark is scheduled to have a release in September, so watch the skies for sharks when the time arrives, I guess. Time for talk and bullshit is over. Slenderman is finally coming to the big screen with the French filmmaker Sylvain White in the director's chair. He has mostly been keeping himself busy with television work, but was also responsible for the 2016 I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. Slenderman stars Joey King and Julia Gutani Telles with Javier Botet playing the title character. And if you are unfamiliar with Botet, then I recently did a review of a movie he was in and actually got to act and not just rely on his unique looks with the British dark comedy Freehold, so make sure you check that one out on my channel after you've seen this video. It will be interesting to see how this internet legend will do on the big screen, so make a mark on your calendar for the 18th of May, as that's when Slenderman will be unleashed upon us all. Slice is a comedy horror that has gained a bit of attention due to it having Chance the Rapper in it. The film is directed by Austin Weasley, who has done several of Chance's music videos in the past. Slice is supposed to be about a guy who is framed for the murders of several pizza delivery boys, and there might also be some ghosts or werewolves showing up as well. The short teaser doesn't give us much or anything really, except that it goes for a silly and entertaining tone. Slice doesn't have a release date yet, but is expected to pop up during the summer of 2018. Fans of 2008's The Strangers should be happy to hear that the long-awaited sequel, The Strangers Pray at Night, will finally be completed for a release next year. This is a sequel that has been talked about ever since the first one was released 10 years ago, but it was first earlier this year that the project finally got into production, now with director Johannes Roberts doing the directing. He had some success with the shark movie 47 meters down this year, and the cast he has to work with consists of the lovely Christina Hendricks, Martin Henderson, Bailey Madison and Levis Pullman. I never saw the original for some reason, but if you did and enjoyed it, then look out for the strangers pray at night on the night of March. Leave us alone! But we've just started. Ah! As mentioned last year, we are getting a Suspiria remake and now it seems very likely that it will be out during next year as it is currently done filming and in post-production. I still have zero interest in this project that apparently will have a running time of nearly 3 hours. Suspiria would be on the top of the list of horror properties that I would not want to see remade so whatever talent the cast and crew that are involved won't be able to sway my mind. That being said, if this film does well and gets more people to check out the original, then it's not all that bad of course and I'm always for Dario Argento and Daria Nicolodi getting a paycheck. Suspira is expected to come out during the fall, so there we go. Bloomhouse and Universal is getting ready to grab more of our money on the 27th of April with their newest film Truth or Dare. The film stars nice looking younger people who are tricked into playing a game of Truth and Dare during the trip to Mexico, unleashing a supernatural spirit that will surely take them out one after the other. The film is directed by Jeff Wadlow, who might be mostly known for being the director of Kick-Ass 2. He did dabble with the horror genre in 2005 with Cry Wolf and as a screenwriter on the television show Bates Motel. Whenever Blue Mouse and Universal joins the forces, it usually means a wide release and a huge income for them both, so even if I have no trailer or anything else than a simple plot to go by, I'm certain that we're going to hear a lot about True to Dare when spring arrives. Unfriended Game Night is a sequel that we probably all knew would come out one day. Unfriended from 2014 was perhaps not the best critically received horror film, but it did make a bunch of money in the box office, which of course is enough to warrant a follow-up. 
This one will be about a teen who gets a new laptop, but soon discovers that the previous owner is not only watching him, but is also willing to do whatever it takes to get the laptop back. It will use the same storytelling by letting us see what is going on through a computer screen, which annoyed a lot of people, but also intrigued some on the first one. Blue Mouse picked up the first film from the festival market, but are this time behind it as a production company. The film is aiming for a 2018 release, but due to Blue Mouse having several other high priority properties also scheduled for a release this upcoming year, I would not be surprised if this one ends up being dumped onto a video on demand platform instead of getting a theatrical release. But this is coming for someone who disliked the first movie, so what do I know? Unsane will be the first time the Academy Award winning director Steven Soderbergh will tackle our beloved horror genre. Word is that Soderbergh shot the entire thing on an iPhone, which doesn't come as a huge surprise as he is a guy who enjoys to experiment with the film media. Not that this will be the first film in a genre to be filmed on a cell phone or other electronic devices. Unsane starts the lovely Claire Foy as a woman who is put into a mental institution against her will, and it is rumored to deal a lot with mental health, making us guess if what the main character is seeing is real or just in her head. I'm not sure if this is a straight up horror film, as it could just as easily float more into thriller or drama territory, but I still feel like Unsane is worth a mentioning. Winchester, the house that Ghost built, is a new supernatural film that will be out in theaters on the 2nd of February. The movie can brag about having Academy Award winning actress Helen Mirren on board, and the trailer promises a gothic looking film with plenty of spooky ghosts popping up to jump scare you out of your seat. Like most ghost movies, Winchester is also based on a true story. The supposedly real story was about Sarah Winchester, a woman who constantly worked on a mansion due to her believing that the spirits that reside within it would kill her if she stopped. The film is penned and directed by the German duo Peter and Michael Spierig, who have a few genre films under their belt by now, with this year's Jigsaw and Undead from 2003 being the standouts. If you just cannot get enough of ghosts running amok in huge houses, then Winchester, the house that ghosts built, might be it for you. This spirit has a power we've not seen before. It has found us. You Shall Not Sleep is a new Spanish supernatural horror film that takes place in an abandoned psychiatric hospital where a group of avant-garde theater group is experiencing with insomnia. A young promising actress named Bianca joins the group, but to get the leading part that she desperately wants, she has to go all the way and keep herself awake longer than any of her competitors. Supernatural entities start to interfere and suddenly it's not only the unhealthy nature of keeping yourself awake for so long that becomes dangerous to the group. You Shall Not Sleep looks like it is the Spanish answer to The Conjuring or the Insidious movies, and considering how good Spanish horror has been for the last 10 years, hopefully this one has something to offer for the supernatural subgenre, which is starting to become a bit stale at this point. 20th Century Fox has picked up the distribution rights for the film and are expecting to unleash it upon us during 2018. So there you have it, 33 horror films to watch out for in 2018. I hope that some of these might be unfamiliar, but still sparked an interest in you. And if there are any of these that you are extra excited for, or if I missed any, then let me know about it in the comment section below. Personally I'm curious about the new Halloween film, can't wait to see the new Insidious film, and also have curiosity regarding Incident in a Ghostland and You Shall Not Sleep. If you enjoy all things horror, but perhaps have a taste for the ones that no one talks about, both from present and past, then check out my reviews as I try to talk about movies that no one else gives a look at. I also have a Patreon page, so if you know, if you like to buy me a beer through the internet, then that's a good way to do it. I wish you all a great New Year's, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the future.